Hey guys, James Jameson, uh, working on the old Chevy again today, and I need to figure out what's going on with the, the AC. The AC is actually blowing pretty cold, but um, there, there's just not hardly any air coming out of the vents. You can see there's a little bit of air, but when the truck's moving and it's 100 degrees outside, this is not nearly enough air to... not nearly enough air to cool you off even if the AC is blowing at 40 degrees. So there's a few things it could be. Um, it could be a weak blower motor, it could be something in the wiring or a ground or something in the blower resistor. Uh, what's really common on these trucks is that the evaporator just gets really clogged with all the crap that gets sucked in from, uh, from the outside vent and then it just sticks there around the evaporator. Uh, so we're going to look at that, uh, we're going to test a few things. Uh, first thing we want to do though is gain access to the blower motor which is right here under the dash. So looking at the blower motor, we have a couple wires here, a power and a ground. Um, the first thing I want to do is just check and make sure that the voltage is good. Uh, with the key off it should be around, I'm sorry, with the key on and the uh, engine off it should be around uh, 12 and a half volts if the battery is fully charged. Uh, with the engine running, it should be whatever the alternator is putting out, so around 13.5 to 14.5 uh, volts. Uh, we can access these two wires here. If you have a voltmeter, we'll check that real quick. Okay, I'm only showing around 8 volts with the key on and the engine off. Uh, the battery voltage is around 12, so let me start it up and see what it does. about nine and a half volts which is a little low so we're losing a few volts but I'm gonna disconnect the blower motor and recheck it so we're getting good alternator voltage 13.9 to the connectors I probably just didn't have it um, all the way on there and we're probably getting some sort of voltage drop out of the blower motor so at this point I can say that my connections are probably okay at least the wiring to the connections are okay I might want to uh, play with these a little bit and, and make sure that they're getting a tight fit on the blower motor itself. Um, but we know the blower motor is working and we know that the wiring to the blower motor is doing what it should be doing. We should be showing max voltage when the uh, blower is on high. Alright, so what happens if you don't have a, a voltmeter, a multimeter? Um, that's fine. Uh, you can, I mean, it, it's helpful for sure, but you can do just do the sound test. These blower motors are really loud, and if yours isn't loud when the AC is on high, then you probably have a problem. Most likely, it is going to be really loud. If it's not really loud, then then you may want to invest in a multimeter or uh, or pay someone to figure out what's going on uh, but this is just a simple test and as far as electrical diagnostics that's something that you should be familiar with if we need to go further than this but that's for a totally different video uh, for this one since we know that the blower motor is working it seems to be loud enough it's getting the correct voltage uh, then we need to pull the uh, blower motor out and see if we have a clog between the blower motor and the um, the evaporator. You should understand a little bit of at least what's what's happening here. So this is the blower motor. We've already established that. Uh, this is part of your your whole AC and heater box, your HVAC box. So inside this box you have um, the evaporator, you have a heater core, and you have a series of doors and uh, some sort of motor or actuator that will open and close these doors. Um, or move them rather so say if you turn turn it from cold to heat you're gonna have a door that moves and it's gonna redirect the flow of air from the evaporator to the heater core same thing if you switch from say defrost to the panel vents you'll have another door that redirects the flow of air so uh, so that's kinda what we're talking about as far as the evaporator goes um, Typically the evaporator 
Well, it could be one or the other. There's going to be evaporator. Let's say, let's just say for easy um, explanation, the evaporator is right here, and the heater core is right there next to it. So the air has got to come through here. This is the evaporator. So this is the part of the AC where the cold um, comes into the car. The freon comes in through the expansion valve or the orifice tube at low pressure, and it comes into this evaporator, which is kind of like a radiator, but it, instead of radiating heat, it, re it radiates the cold. So, so the cold, so the air comes through here and blows across this really cold evaporator, and then that's where the cold air comes from, and then it's directed through the doors, out, you know, through this whole box, uh, into the vents. Um, if it's directed towards the heater core, it would be the same thing, but instead of having, you know, really cold freon here, you have the hot coolant here, that's going through the heater core and the air will blow across the heater core and then come out the vents through whatever, you know, doors are open, whatever, you know, selection you've made on the dash. So, um, in newer cars, there's a cabin filter somewhere. So, so let's, let's just say that this were a newer car and it is, it does have it on uh, newer Silverados. Well, if only for a few years, the Silverados had a cabin filter somewhere around here and so this air would blow through the cabin filter and that would collect all the garbage and then and then it would flow through the evaporator or the heater core or whatever anyway so where we're at now is what we want to do is the easiest thing to do is to just pull this blower motor off and see what's happening back there okay so before i mess with these screws i'm going to just pull this hose off here and get it out of the way and then the two electrical connections that we saw before, I'm just going to go ahead and unplug those. The power in the ground. And if you remember, I was showing low voltage when I was testing this before with it plugged into the motor. And this connection is very loose. It's like really super loose. So if you've got similar connections to this, you actually put a small screwdriver in here and and just kind of bend this tab and uh, and then re-slide it on the terminal of the blower motor. Just what you're essentially trying to do is make it a tighter fit. So these things just kind of wear and stretch out because it's just like a little springy piece of metal. So you can stick a little screwdriver, kind of bend it back down and just try and get a tight snug fit on the blower motor. Okay, so I wasn't able to get this top screw out um, because of this metal piece was in the way, which is a part of the support structure for the dash. Um, I was able to, I think, loosen it slightly, uh, but because of this gasket being in the way and this being in the way, I couldn't take it out. Uh, if yours doesn't have this gasket, it may be a little bit easier, but since mine had this uh, this gasket here, uh, what I was able to do is just get all the other screws out and leave that one in there. And then, because this blower motor has these slots right here, you can just kind of slide slide it out of the slot. Right through there is either the heater core or the evaporator, probably the evaporator. Um, I'll take a picture of it and show you that because I, I should be able to at least get a picture of it. But that's what we are aiming for to uh, clean out. Basically, it, most likely there's going to be a whole bunch of garbage just collecting on that. So let's see if we can get a good look at that real quick. So the air has to blow through this in order to get out the vents. And as you can see, there's just not a lot of openings for air to blow through. So that's what we want to clean out. It's going to be nasty. Um, if it's dry stuff, you might be able to vacuum some of it out, but it's probably going to be kind of wet and gross uh, because the evaporator is where the moisture drips off of. 
the stuff that drips on the ground when your AC's on. So basically every time the AC's on, this thing gets wet. So that's why all the stuff just sticks and collects in this like kind of thick, disgusting mess. Uh, so we'll use our hands. Uh, use your hands, use a vacuum cleaner, use whatever you can. Just try not to damage the fins or anything about this because uh, you could develop an AC leak if you start getting too aggressive. Um, and we don't want to do that. We just want to clean that out. So probably using your fingers is the best and safest bet. So what I'm doing now is I'm basically, there's a lot of thick stuff I could get off of the evaporator. Just by rubbing my fingers across of it. Uh, but the problem is, is that the angle that your wrist is at to try and actually grab some of the stuff is really, it hurts. Um, so what I'm doing now, I'm just rubbing, I'm just basically rubbing it to try and knock it down to the bottom. Once it gets to the bottom, it's really difficult to get out. Uh, at the bottom, it's just sitting in the, like in the bottom of this, of that box. Um, and it's all wet, disgusting slime. Um, but I can't really grab a lot of it just because of the angle that it puts my wrist at. Uh, so I'm just gonna push it all down to the bottom and do my best. And I think what we may do is just let it dry out, like the stuff that I can't get, let it dry out a little bit and then stick the vacuum in there and suck up what I can't actually grab. Okay, this is what I was able to grab off of the uh, off the evaporator and actually remove it. There's a whole pile of crap that fell down to the bottom of the box uh, that I just can't get out. So we're just gonna let it dry out a little bit and then get the vacuum out. May have to put the vacuum on blow and, and try and blow some of it too uh, and just get as much out as we can. But this was just caked. This is all the amount that was just caked that I could actually retrieve. So all your airflow from the fan is just being blocked by this. All right, so while I'm letting this dry out, um, there's a lot of little crusty stuff like this that's like actually in between the fins of the evaporator. Like the fins are obviously a lot smaller than my fingers, but they're just like, you know, like a radiator. If you look at the front of a radiator, it has all these tiny little fins. There's just little pieces of metal that radiate either heat or cold, in this case, cold. Uh, but all this crap is like, you know, in between this that I can't get out with just my fingers. So I'm gonna use this old toothbrush and just like kind of rub and hopefully that that'll loosen up a lot of that stuff that I can't get and, you know, hopefully improve the airflow that much better. Alright guys, I'm going to wrap this up. Uh, we've got pretty good, uh, well improved airflow. Not perfect, not 100%. It's not a 2017 car. Uh, there's some more things that we can do and I may or may not make another video on that. But uh, just from what I was able to grab out of the vents, I mean you can see like, or out of the evaporator, you can see like all this crap that was just blocking airflow. Uh, plus a lot that I was able to just blow out with the vacuum cleaner and suck out also with the vacuum cleaner. But like I said, that's not all that we can do. Uh, we can improve it further. It's just going to require removal of the whole dash. So that won't be today. Um, but the essentially, like we saw the box. So this whole box has, it's joined together and it has seals where it joins and also has the ducts that come out to all the vents. So, so you have a, like a foam seal basically. And this truck's 20, 21 years old, it's old. Um, so at every junction where there's a duct that comes out to these vents, to those vents over there, 
and also at the junctions where the box um, joins together, there's these like foam seals that are most likely completely rotten and deteriorated. So you're probably losing air out of every one of those seals as well. So this should make a huge improvement. I mean, just for the amount of air that this is blocking. If you're not happy with that, then, and you know your blower motor's good and all that's good, the wiring's good, electrical, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, then we're just gonna have to pull the dash out um, and and start replacing all those foam seals. Probably pull the um, pull the whole HVAC box apart and do all that. Uh, that's a lot more work, and it's not so much for the DIYer. Um, but we can do that if you know. That's one of those things that you'll have to make the decision on your own whether or not that you want to go through all that work. Um, but most likely you'll be satisfied with this, you know, just cleaning out the evaporator. Um, unless you, your other car is brand new. My other car is brand new, so I may not be satisfied with this. But it's a huge improvement over what it was. Um, so anyway, that's all I've got for you today. And hopefully this helped a little bit at least. Thanks for watching.